Hey guys, it's Liam. Um, today I'm just going to go over some things I think I recommend you should have at home in preparation for um, recovery time, at least for the first week of top surgery. You're going to get home, you're not going to be able to move a lot. You might. Some people are going to be in a lot of pain, other people not so much. If you're like me and you don't experiment, experiment, experience too much pain, um, you probably will make your doctor worry <laughs> because we're more of the type to be likely to over exhaust ourselves, over extend ourselves and hurt ourselves and like stretch our, our stitches and causing larger scars or hurting ourselves in general. Like I was just walking around everywhere like nothing was different until I tried to like extend my arm too much and it hurt myself. I think I actually like tried to move in bed one time to get myself out of bed and I got stuck but I think I actually kind of potentially pulled my drain out a little bit so one's actually longer than the other. But uh, I'm not freaking out about it. I'm just going to go to my post-op office visit and see what the doctor says. So some items that I recommend you should have. A sippy cup with straw. Yes, this is a kid's sippy cup. I have no shame. It has sharks. It's awesome. It was like a dollar or two dollars. It was great. You're going to want bendy straws because you're not going to be able to probably lift up your arm depending on what type of uh, top surgery you have. But get bendy ones. They're great. I love them. They're cute. You can get different color ones. And I also got like this one, uh, another water bottle, has a straw, it's bigger, um, it's for cool or hot um, beverages. One problem about this one is, uh, if you feel it too high, for me, I noticed it made my arm more tired and it could have been a little bit too heavy, but you're not supposed to carry uh, lift more than like 5 pounds for the first week or so, depending on what your surgeon says. Um, but I had to make sure that I didn't make it, like, my roommate didn't put too much beverage in there for me, or it was hard for me to lift. Um, you're going to want some type of, like, non-alcoholic wipes. Um, I don't know. My surgeon didn't tell me to clean my chest just yet because it's still healing. But, like, for your armpits, because you're probably not going to be able to take a shower just yet. And also, like, if you're using the bathroom, and I really hope that you guys are able to wipe your own ass. I mean, I was able to, but, like, for the first two days, I knew I couldn't really, like, move a certain way to do so. So I was like, I'm fine being constipated right now. Until I can move my own arms to wipe my own ass, I'm not taking a poop. Yeah. TMI. And thank God by like day two or three I was able to and like I had a bowel movement and I could take care of myself. I refuse to let anyone help me with that. I refuse. Um, another great thing is a back scratcher. It's great because you don't really know how privileged or like you are of how you can like easily just like scratch part of your back or like right here until you have top surgery. Like there's certain movements I can't do. And also like I tend to like rip my nails off or like when I have an itch I scratch too hard where I actually like can then like cut break the skin so this actually prevents you from being able to do so so it's less likely to get an infection or causing any scarring um, also it's great to like if you're far grabbing things and bringing them closer to you um, I'd also get like a breakfast in bed tray so you can eat off of that um, and having like a chair um, near wherever you're sitting I do recommend like maybe like laying on a if you have a recliner use that while you're resting at least for the first week or a couch. I don't have a recliner in my apartment. I wasn't going to go buy one. And I couldn't use my uh, couch because I have cats and I tend to be actually quite allergic to them and mine shed a lot. And we, my roommate and I got a new vacuum, but the vacuum doesn't have an extension on, so we can't vacuum the couch. So like, I didn't think that was a great idea for me to be on the couch. And I didn't want to lock the cats from like the entire um, living space either. So, like, if you have pets, you're not going to want them in the room with you. You're going to want to kick them out because you don't want them jumping on your stitches or anything like that. You're going to be in pain, or if not in that much pain, if they step on you, it's going to be painful. And also, like, especially with cats, you know, they have cat litter. You don't want their nails or their claws are dirty. You don't want that touching, you know, your sensitive sites of where causing, potentially causing an infection. Um, you're going to want lots of pillows. Two pillows ain't going to do it. The first night or so at home... I actually was kind of more of an incline. It wasn't like this because that way it actually put strain on my muscles that um, move the stitches or the drains. You're going to want to be like almost like sitting up. And for that, just like if you're, you know, traveling on a bus cross country or taking an airplane over and you got to sleep, get a traveling neck pillow. This is the best thing ever. Have it snapped. I know I look like a grandpa right now, but I don't care. I can just go like this and I'm good. I'm ready to go. I even took it out when I went on, like went to go watch my friends at the man. Um, rugged manic maniac or something like that i had that around my neck just for comfort so i'm not straining myself or pulling muscles like are pulling my um stitches uh other things you're going to need 
you're going to want to get more protein in. If you don't do, like, protein shakes or you don't eat a lot of chicken or if you're, like, vegetarian or vegan, this probably... If you're a vegan, I wouldn't recommend this. If you're a vegetarian, sure. Um, one thing I just noticed, because I got the uh, Breakfast Essentials high protein, so it's got 15 grams of, like, five, like 10. I did notice it has vitamin E, so I wouldn't recommend taking this before your surgery, and I'd actually check with your doctor if it's okay. I'm, like, I'm going to check with mine because I know before the procedure I wasn't supposed to have any vitamin E, so... Oops. Um, other things you're going to need are uh, blindfolds to sleep probably because especially if you're like in the hospital you're probably not used to the sights and sounds um if you're in talk like inebriated like how i was in the sense of with the narcotics and oh, actually i was on narcotics i had tylenol when i was in the hospital and i was just out of it you shouldn't need them but when i got home uh, there were certain lights i can't easily like fix the curtain and i didn't want to like bother my roommate so once i'm like in bed i'm in bed so i left this on the table the chair next to my bed and I just pop it on and I'm set to go and you can get cortisone cream um, but this early in the uh, healing process my surgeon didn't want me using it so um, you can use Benadryl I use it so instead of like when I really get an itch and I can't put like lotion or something on it on it I just take some Benadryl it helps with the itch so I'm not scratching and I'm not going crazy um, some people get drowsy from it I don't I've been taking it all my life because I'm allergic to the world so it doesn't make me drowsy, but that's one thing you should look out for. Um, also, have applesauce, and you should have, like, a stool softener or some laxatives. I haven't used mine because I ate a lot of apples, and I also um, been eating Activia, which is supposed to be, like, a probiotic yogurt that helps you go. And I haven't had that many issues, but there are some guys and non-binary people that have gone days without um, having a bowel movement, and it can be quite painful. Um, and also what you're going to want to get is a, uh, this right here is pretty much like a surgical disinfectant soap. Um, I had to use it, well, depending on your surgeon, but my surgeon had me use it uh, the night before. I had to take a shower, and from the neck down, I had to clean my body with it. And then in the morning, I had to do the exact same thing. You don't want this on your face. You don't want this in your groin area. You don't want it wearing there anywhere you produce, like, mucus membrane and you really want to take a focus and focus on the area that you're having surgery so my chest my uh, near my armpits and stuff I cleaned it. that area the nipples like anywhere that is in this vicinity I cleaned and you want to clean it for like five minutes this says in the instructions and they also said you like to wash your hair um, with your regular shampoo and your normal products beforehand and then use this but since I washed my hair like two days before and retwisted it kind of I wasn't going to wash my hair, and I told the nurse that. I'm like, my hair texture and hairstyle, I can't do that. And they were, like, fine with it. I just made sure after I cleaned it, I didn't put any hair product. I just put some clips to let it dry. And once you use this on your body, you're not going to want to put any other soaps, lotions on. You're only allowed to use this just to make sure you're, like, there's trying. this is pretty much just trying to kill all the germs off your body or remove as many germs off your body before your surgery just to reduce any risk of infection. Um, those are the most things I can recommend for you to get. Um, apple sauce is also another thing if you have a, like a bullet um blender get that out oh i'd also recommend like i think the night before i prepped meals so i made i made a bunch of chicken and broccoli and that's pretty much all i eat i boiled some eggs and i got some extra containers and i kind of did meal prep like if i was doing like a workout plan diet for a week and i put some of it in the freezer some in the fridge so it's easily accessible oh and also get like paper plates if you don't have a dishwasher or if you're unable to do the dishes and you don't want stacking up like dirt and stuff like that, get plastic silverware and stuff. I mean, I know it's not very eco-friendly, but it's only for like a week or so until um, you're healed so you can do those things unless you have like help around the house. But even so, even if you have someone like I have my best friend and my girlfriend visiting so often helping me with stuff, um, it kind of lessens the burden on them as the caregiver and or at least it's like gives you some independence. And at least in how I see it. So those are some things I would recommend for post-op, just preparing for it. Eat healthy, drink water, drink lots of fluids, juice. Um, some people say, like, drinking a lot of apple juice and stuff, but I say, like, if you're, con like, self-conscious about gaining too much weight because you're going to be inactive, be careful because there's a lot of, like, sugar and stuff in it. So maybe water it down. I, I totally go for the water. And you're also going to want to um, reduce how much sodium you're uh, intaking. You want to reduce your sodium intake. But those are just some tips that I have. Um, if anybody has any other tips or I said anything wrong, please leave a comment and educate everybody so everyone's better well-informed for their potential surgery or someone that they care about surgery. All right, bye.